Hi, Jimmy here, and today we are talking about Windows. So the eyes are the windows to our souls, and windows are the windows to our houses. Shut up. There's been some talk on the old Viking grapevine and the, the sort of archaeology news network. I think that's an actual website. Anyway, I can't think of a better thing to call it. So the, the, the network of news about archaeology uh, on the internet where we have some interesting new thoughts on glass in the Viking Age. And glass is a really interesting subject because glass is what happens when sand gets really angry. And obviously glass is something that we take for granted nowadays because I am looking at a glass lens on a camera. The, the little screen on my mic receiver is made of glass. Um, behind the camera there is a light with a glass light bulb next to my TV with a glass screen in front of my bookshelf with a glass door. And then my mobile phone has a glass screen and obviously all of my windows are glazed. But a thousand years ago, glass was a much more valuable commodity, partly because it was all handmade, like there was no mass produced glass in Europe a thousand years ago, and partly because the ingredients and technology required to make glass changed with the collapse of the Roman Empire. And the Romans tended, well actually further, further back, the ancient Egyptians and the Phoenicians were making glass, like they were aware of glass, glass may or may not have begun as an accident whilst people were making faience in Egypt and faience is a, is a different material which is really interesting um, and people like if you go on the internet and you're like what exactly is faience the answer is well it's not glass but it's glassy and it's weird stuff and it involves uh, silicates and m magic wizards basically. And after all, 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 all time passes and the Romans get their grubby hands on glass making, like they get their grubby hands on every technology available in the Mediterranean and they decide to make it en masse. Mass production of glass starts happening in the Roman Empire to an extent. And you get things like uh, glass casting and table glass being used to make window panes and that kind of thing. And one of the ingredients in Roman glass is natron. And natron or natrum is a naturally occurring substance. It's really cool. And you basically get beds of this, this weird alkaline stuff uh, in places that used to be seas. I think seas or lakes. And there's a place called Wadi Al Natrun in Egypt, and that's where a lot of this natrum comes from. Uh, and it is used as an ingredient in glass making for hundreds of years in the Roman Empire. And it means that Roman glass and Mediterranean glass is different to glass made in other places where this particular ingredient isn't available. And that's the case after the Roman Empire collapses, people stop using as much natrum. I think maybe it was still being used in glass making in places like Egypt and the Arabian Peninsula. Could be wrong about that, but it seems unlikely that its use would totally collapse. Um, and it seems more likely that just, you know, the Roman Empire no longer exists, so those trading links no longer exist, so it's being used in glass making more locally, but it's not being traded as much as it was because the infrastructure is not there. And in places like the Eastern Mediterranean, they start using uh, soda ash from particularly alkaline plants and you start getting soda ash glass being made in places like Greece and also in, in places like Italy uh, and other areas. If those plants aren't available, you start seeing other plant matter ash being used and then you start seeing potash being used, and potash is basically wood ash. Hi, Editing Jimmy here. So when I say that potash is wood ash, potash is a chemical compound, and it's um, potassium, basically, 
uh, compound that is now mined. Uh, a lot of it comes from Ethiopia. This comes from places that were inland seas. And uh, prior to the 14th century, potash was basically made using wood ashes that were then soaked in water in a pot, uh, hence the name. So potash now is is very different stuff to the potash that they were making, manufacturing in the early and high medieval period before Ethiopian mined potash started to, to dominate the scene. And I think Canadian as well potash is, is, is mined in Canada now, or with that whole great inland sea thing that they've got going on in North America. But anyway, it's a chemical, chemical compound. So, bye. That is used in glass making very famously in forest glass, in sort of central European glass, which is called forest glass because it's generally made in forests. Why? Because there's loads of wood in forests, and if you're making wood ash, potash, glass, then you need lots of wood, and so you do it where there's lots of wood, it has to forest. So, forest glass is beautiful, and it's being made from AD 1000 to AD 1400, and then after that things start to change again. But the Viking Age, and in particular Viking Age Scandinavia, isn't a place where we get particularly good glass being made. So Scandinavian glass making is really in its infancy in the Viking Age. In fact, we don't have an awful lot of evidence for Scandinavian glass making beyond beads, and a lot of their beads were imported anyway, so they aren't doing big exciting stuff with glass. One of the things they're certainly not doing is using soda ash to make glass. And recently, the National Museum of Denmark put out some publication material, they put out articles and they put out some interviews and sound bites talking about glass that had been found. This glass isn't new. The glass that's been found has been found over the last 25 years from Hedeby in the west to Birka in the northeast. So it's a big spread. It's a big geographical spread of fine spots for this glass. Basically Scandinavia, southern Scandinavia, is where this glass has been found. In half a dozen sites, spread all over the place, and some of them are uh, occupation sites, some of them appear to be domestic sites, some of them appear to be pre-Christian temple sites, some of them appear to be Christian church sites. So there are lots of different places all over Scandinavia where glass has been found. And originally this glass is, is found and people think, oh well, bit of glassware, or oh well, maybe Christian church or whatever. And then for some reason, it was just never touched again, I assume. Um, because all of a sudden now, the NMD is saying, well, we, look, we've, we've looked at all of this glass, we've analyzed all of this glass, it's clearly pane glass. So it's flat, right? A pane of glass is a flat piece of glass. It's what you have in your windows. So this is window glass. This is panes of window glass, or fragments of panes of window glass. Like some of them are this big, they're not like, Oh, we found a pane of glass. It's more like, oh, we found a piece of a pane of glass, maybe. Let's take a look at it. Let's take some samples and analyze it. Lo and behold, this is soda ash glass. That's really exciting. Why is that really exciting? It's exciting because it means that in the middle of the Viking Age, in the 10th century, in Scandinavia, people are using imported Southern European and Western European and possibly Near Eastern glass to glaze their windows. And I'm not talking about, like, the Great East Window of York Minster, I'm not talking about a French window, I'm talking probably small pieces of glass in relatively small windows, but that is still a very impressive thing to have. You might be talking about something like a foot tall by six inches wide, and that's enough to impress people in your part of the world because you do not have the technology and the material to make this glass and this glass has come from, say, Turkey. Why not? So, what does that mean? The articles about this, and I'll link to the reading in the, in the description, tend to emphasise the fact that the PR material from the National Museum and places like that emphasises the fact that this proves that the Vikings weren't barbarians, that they're not these barbaric 
brutal, rapacious people that people always seem to think they are. And I was reading this and going, well, duh, like, I am, I'm pretty sure at this point, everybody who subscribes to my channel, like, 70-something thousand people, which is insane, thank you so much, you're all amazing, I love you, know that the Vikings weren't these brutal barbarians, they were a highly developed, complex, nuanced culture. Like, Old Norse culture was Old Norse culture. Like, we know that they weren't barbarians, but clearly this is still something that at least the National Museum feels that it needs to be hammering home. Is you know, they had glass in their windows, they they cooked their food, they didn't just wrap themselves in furs, they sewed their clothing with, with silk thread. So a lot of that is where the excitement's coming from. The excitement is from the headlines. The headlines are things like Viking barbarians had glass windows, you know, that sort of stuff. And to me, as somebody who studied archaeology and who tries to keep up to date with this sort of thing, it is interesting, it is intriguing, because it is yet another example of the Old Norse trade routes and trade links that we forget about. So it did, could they have looted these from Christian churches? Well, yeah, of course they, they could have looted these from Christian churches, but it seems more likely that they traded this glass, that they were trading this material as a luxury item to use it in important places. And it seems from where we found them that most of the places these are being used are high status places. Temples are high status. Religious sanctuaries are high status. Palaces are high status. So these are the sorts of places where glass from the Byzantine Empire, maybe the Frankish Empire, uh, maybe some of the areas around uh, the Levant are being imported from. Maybe Egyptian glass. Imagine if you are a local Jarl or even a king and you can say, by the way, the, the beautiful green light that's being shed on us as we enjoy our meal on this lovely summer's evening is being created by the Egyptian glass in my window. Yes, pretty impressive, isn't it? Mm -hmm. All the way from uh, from Egypt. Yes, it's it's made with a natron. You, you've never heard of natron. Well, you wouldn't have. Uh, it's something that only civilized people like me understand. You see the, the effect? So it's potentially a really impressive thing that somebody had imported. It cost a lot of money. It might have cost lives. And that's another thing that these articles are talking about. They're talking about how the coloured light would have been seen as magical. And I think that's maybe taking it slightly far, um, but it certainly would have been impressive. Glassmaking is known. Remember, glassmaking isn't unknown in Scandinavia. We know that they were making glass, they were making beads, they loved beads. Um, so, possibly not magical. Uh, uh, except to, to certain people maybe who had no knowledge or understanding of how glass was made, but certainly impressive. You know, the fact that this glass is from very far away is probably the impressive thing, rather than the fact that it is glass. Um, people would have encountered coloured glass on a, a semi-regular basis if they live in a, in a larger centre, and some of this is from large places like Hedeby, remember, and Birka, they would have been encountering coloured glass on a daily basis. They would have been seeing people wearing glass beads. They may have known people who worked glass. We also know that Roman glass was often recycled, and it seems that in places like the Frankish Empire, um, and possibly places like early Saxon England and sub-Roman Britain, um, Recycling Roman glass and pottery was an industry in itself, which is really, really interesting. In Roman Britain, there's a huge, it's a vast amount of glass making going on. And then in sub-Roman Britain, there is no glass making whatsoever, pretty much. And exceptions to that might include uh, for use in church windows, but then recycled Roman glass might well have been used for the earliest church windows or glass imported from France, gifted from the Pope in, in Italy, um, or otherwise acquired glass. So glass is a really interesting subject, and 
I would actually like to read up a little more on early medieval, the early medieval glass world, like the, the world of glass trading, recycling and making. Um, where were the big glass making centres, if any, after the collapse of the empire in, in Europe? We know that places in Italy that are building churches, that is everywhere, they have glass windows in this period. We know that wealthy houses and palaces in France have glass. So this is exciting because Scandinavia can now say, so did we, right? That's what's exciting about this, that especially if you are Scandinavian, if you are from, if you are from near Hedeby or if you're from near where some of this glass has been found, you can say, oh, and by the way, 1100 years ago, people had glass in their windows around here. And some of that glass was being imported from as far away potentially as the Mediterranean. So that gives you a nice little basis for next time somebody says, oh, well, the Vikings were a bunch of barbarians. You can say, well, actually they came from a, a culture where, where there were huge trading networks and, and, and vast amounts of materials were being traded all across the continent of Europe. And they were using trading links that extend right the way to China and India, which is really, really cool. So if you combine that with the fact that they're importing steel from, <clears throat> from places like India into Europe in this period, and then swords are being made out of that and used in Scandinavia by people who are culturally Old Norse, and then looking through those windows made of glass on those warriors using those swords made of Indian steel is really cool just to think about. It's really interesting to think about, I think. Um, it's lovely. So uh, that's, that's the thing. Elite. Viking Age people in Scandinavia were using glass in their windows in the 10th century. It's cool to know, it's a fun fact to know, and it hopefully changes people's views on the Viking world a little bit more every time we get discoveries like this. So hopefully this has given you some interesting food for thought. Hopefully you will enjoy reading the article, um, which I've linked to in the description. <clears throat> And if you have enjoyed this video and you would like to support the channel financially, of course, we have the Patreon page. Thank you to my patrons. You are amazing. And we have the coffee link, so you can chuck me a couple of quid and I'll buy myself some caffeine to keep me going while I edit. Um, pretty soon there's going to be some podcasty stuff happening as well, which I'm very excited about. And yeah, thank you very much. And until the next time, Tantronissa, Ulvaur. Bye bye. Yeah.